Eric Darling here. Does any, does any of this surprise you at this point? Uh, Darling Data, alive and well, thriving, writhing, grinding away. Uh, in this vi today's video, we're going to talk about um, extended events profiling ICs. Uh, there's actually really only one ick, but um, it's happened to me so many times, I'm going to pluralize it. So um, I've got a store procedure. You, you may have heard of it. Um, you may have used it. You may um, have it installed on your server, but uh, it sits there collecting dust while you don't update anything called SP underscore human events, 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 events. And of course, the point of it is to make working with human events a lot easier than Microsoft has made it. Because as usual, Eric Darling cares about you where Microsoft does not. Eric Darling wants you to succeed. Eric Darling wants you to figure out your problems. Eric Darling wants you to live a long, happy life. Microsoft cares not, except for anything uh, other than uh, maximizing shareholder happiness. So, <clears throat> we're going to look at that today. Not shareholder happiness, but that, that thing up there. Anyway. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about my happiness. Uh, if you really like this channel co content and you find me worth $4 a month, there's a link in the video description that, where it says, become a member, which is sort of a strange way of putting it, but I guess that's what you become when you get a membership. You become a member. Uh, you can do that for $4 a month. If $4 a month is just f far beyond your financial grasp, I get it. Not everyone can consult for, not everyone can make these lucrative YouTube videos for money. Uh, I, am, I am up to nearly 20 members at this point. So if you do the math on that per month, um, I can almost like pay one month of a cable bill, almost. Uh, it, you can liking, commenting, subscribing, all free. All, all open things that you can do to make me a happy man. Uh, if you need help with your SQL server and you are sit looking around the internet saying, gosh, all these consultants look stupid and goofy and they, they, say, they, they write schlocky things about leadership or whatever, um, I'm very good at all these things. I'm much better than the rest of them. So if you need help with that at a reasonable rate, you know how to reach me. I, I'm, I'm very reachable. You can reach anywhere and find me. Up, down, around, pretty much any, pro, any, any preposition or proposition. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want some SQL Server training uh, of, the, of the, the low cost, high quality va uh, variety, um, you, if you go to that link up there and you put in that coupon code, you can get all of mine for the rest of your life for about 150 US dollars. It's a pretty good deal. It'll make you happy. It really, really tickles the dopamine. Uh, if you want to catch me live and in person, um, I will be alongside Kendra Little for two days of performance tuning wonderfulness uh, this November 4th and 5th in Seattle, Washington. Um, if there's an event near you that you think Eric Darling would make a good, uh, a good component of a good member of, uh, you can let me know what that event is and I can talk to the organizers and maybe get a pre-con there so that, um, you know, uh, I, can, I can pay my hotel bill or something, which is, which is always nice when that happens. So uh, anyway, with that out of the way, <clears throat> let's talk about extended event ics, or rather an ick that I have with extended events. Now, um, I've got a store procedure here called eventually, <clears throat> and the whole point of this store procedure is that uh, there is a one second delay and then a very fast query and then a one second delay and a very fast query. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SP human events. Well, I've already used it. We've already got this thing over here, uh, which is we're watching live data. If you know, uh, but I've, set up, I've run SP human events with this set of parameters to set up this session to look at query performance data. And then I came over here and I right clicked on this and I hit watch live data. Now, when I do that uh, and I click run here, this is going to run for about six seconds because there are about one, two, three, four, five, six, wait for delays. Now, the way that I set up SP human events to run is uh, I put a query duration filter on here of five seconds, which means 
anything that runs over five seconds, we're going to capture information about. Usually a pretty good starting place when you're profiling a store pro an entire store procedure because, you know, something that runs over five seconds, you can usually do something about that. If you have stuff that runs for way longer than five seconds, like if the whole thing runs for an hour and, like, there's three queries, you might want to set that a little higher so that you figure out, you know, um, I don't know, probably maybe one of the queries takes a second and the other one takes, like, three seconds and the other one takes like many minutes. Well, you don't really need to see query plans and stuff for the other ones. That's kind of boring. But um, sometimes in unprofiling store procedures, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's lots of tiny little queries. There might even be dynamic SQL. There might even be other store procedures getting executed. There might be all sorts of stuff that happens. I can't possibly predict all of the insane things that you people will put into your store procedures. So I usually start off by doing something like this so I can just capture the sort of higher value stuff and figure out what of that stuff I need to tune. The thing is, all of the queries in here ran pretty quick, right? So we had the wait for delays that bumped up the total duration, the wall clock time, but nothing in here took a whole lot of CPU time or took a, long, or, or took a lot of wall clock time individually. It, was, it happened as a group. Now, so when we come over here and we look at the output from, um, from the output in extended events, we're only going to see a couple lines. We're going to see module end and statement completed. So we see where the store procedure finished, that's module end, and we see SQL statement completed. That was the query that I ran in SSMS saying we're all done, right? And they, they each had a duration of just about six seconds of wall clock time. There's a little bit of difference in microseconds there, I guess for whatever reason, not really terribly important. Not something we have to worry about. Maybe it was just probably just the difference between like the store procedure ending and SQL Server being signaling back to SSMS, hey, this is done. This can happen when you have code where, sort of like what I was talking about before, you have a whole bunch of queries that run very quickly individually, but they add up to a lot of time in the aggregate, a high duration in the aggregate. You might have loops, you might have, you know, uh, cursors, you might do all sorts of weird stuff in a store procedure and, that makes the store procedure run for a long time, but you don't have an actual single individual query that you can go and tune very easily. It's not a very easy situation when you're dealing with that because now you have to figure out, you know, it, like, like at a very, very small scale, very small improvements you can make so that, you know, um, each individual step finishes faster than it did before so that in the aggregate things are faster. You know, like with a big query that takes a long time to run, you might be able to make, you know, let's just say it took 30 seconds to run, you might be able to make a whole bunch of changes to that one query to bring that one query down to like, I don't know, two, three seconds or something. But when you have a query that runs, say, you know, a million times, and you need to get that query to, to produce results in the aggregate faster, you're looking at really micromanaging a lot of different individual things. That's when you have to start getting query plans for much smaller bits of, of, of SQL and, say, taking something that takes 300 milliseconds and getting that down to even fewer milliseconds, like three or two or five milliseconds or something crazy. And going from 300 down to that smaller number is where you start, you know, seeing the, the bigger results again in the aggregate. That's a little bit beyond what I can do in this short video, but it is something that it is an eventuality that a lot of query tuners need to prepare for where, you know, um, you can even compare this to like if you have a big, gigantic, massive query and let's say it finishes in 500 milliseconds but there are 500 operators in there and they all take very few milliseconds, you know, sometimes a query like that is just the sum of its parts, right? Like you, like the only way for you to make something faster is either to take parts out of that or really start breaking down where like any amount of time is spent in trying to improve that. Not always the easiest thing to do um, for, especially for big queries like that, you might even have significant compile time on the query itself. But anyway, uh, just something that you should be aware of when you're profiling. Um, I mean, if you're not using SP Human events, you're, you're, you're screwing up. But uh, something to be aware of when you're profiling stuff is that you might have a store procedure that takes five or six seconds to run, but none of the individual parts really contribute heavily to that. So that's when you would have to start taking 
the query duration filter and putting this down to a much smaller number, like, you know, like either one second or 500 milliseconds or something else in order to find query tuning opportunities so that for each individual execution of that thing, you can speed that individual execution up and bring down the entire wall clock time of the, the, the whole shebang. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that you will continue to view this channel, comment, subscribe, like, maybe even become a member. Anyway, that's good for me here. Thank you for watching.